What's happening everyone? Steve here, Cars with Steve, and today I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the Sync 3 media screen in the 2022 Ford Transit Connect. And this is going to be going over through everything you need to know, like how to be able to connect an Android and an iPhone device, setting up Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, using factory navigation, and everything in between. If you're looking for a fuller walk around, check down in the description because I've put together a comprehensive video on the entire vehicle as well that includes a test drive. But let's dive into it, have a little bit of fun, and see how we can use the technology inside of the Transit. Now this is going to be the Sync 3 media screen that's going to be standard in the XLT and the titanium trim levels of the vehicle. So a few things to point out about the screen, firstly this specific one does have factory navigation. But if yours doesn't have factory nav, don't worry about it because we do have the flexibility of connecting through either Android or iPhone devices to be able to use Apple Maps, Google Maps and Waze directly through this middle screen. But if yours didn't have factory nav, yours just wouldn't have the map there instead. We would have our audio there, a little compass and then still the ability to add our phone along the bottom. But let's go through, let's go through some of the basics though. So we We've got our basic audio tab there. So as you can see, we've got our different sources. We can easily change sources that way if we'd like to. So we can go AM, FM, Sirius XM. If we had a USB stick with MP3s, we could also play that as well. And we've also got a little bit more flexibility. So we can tune this way if we want to. We can do a direct tune this way. So we can literally just type in the station there. Or if our vehicle supports it, we can press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel in order to be able to change the radio stations that way instead. So we've got some flexibility there. In order to be able to save a preset, we're literally just gonna tune, press and hold, and as you can see, preset is now saved into the vehicle. So it really is that simple. One thing to note, when we're in, actually let's go to settings for a second because we go to our radio settings. As you can see, we've got a few options there. If we go into our preset pages, I always recommend going to the max pages, which is going to be six, there we go. So as you can see, we jump back into our audio screen for a second there, and now we've got up to 30 individual presets that are a mix of AM, FM, Sirius XM. Now, one other thing to note, if we go into our sources again, if we change it to Sirius XM and then jump into our settings, this is now a Sirius XM button. So we've got some flexibility. We've got our parental lock. We've got our game notifications. We can tune to start. We can lock out certain channels. We can skip out different channels as well. So if you've got channels that you don't like, you can literally skip them out if you wanted to. Now, connecting a phone to the vehicle is a very straightforward process. So literally what we're going to do on our actual device there. So we're just going to press add phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. All right. And then on our phone, all we're going to do is just jump into Wi-Fi or jump into our Bluetooth and we're going to press the Bluetooth button. And we're literally just going to wait for Ford Transit Connect to pop up. We're going to press it. Okay. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. We need to make sure that the pin numbers match up, which they do. So we're going to hit yes and pair. Do we want to allow contacts and favorites to sync? Yes. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Perfect, nice and simple. Now, a couple things popped up there. We've got our 911 assist. Always recommend turning that one on. Big reason why is because if the vehicle senses a collision and your phone's connected, it's automatically gonna dial 911 for us. And then automatic contact download. Yeah, we're connecting to our phone for a reason. So let's hit okay there and we are connected, perfect. Now we've got a cover up a couple options there. We've got my recent call list, my contacts, my phone, we've got the keypad and a few other things. So we can literally dial things out directly through the screen if we wanted to. Now, if we go back to the home screen for a second, so we go back home, as you can see, my phone's connected. We can see my signal strength. We can see the battery life, and we can also see a few other things. Jumping back, if we want to, we can remove a phone easily by going to our settings. We go to phone, and as you can see, we can view devices. <laughs> we can manage contacts, set ringtone, and a few other things. So we go view devices. If we've got multiple devices, that's where these things would show up. But we do have the flexibility of being able to set up Apple CarPlay inside of this thing as well, and very straightforward to do it. Literally, all we're going to do is take our USB cable, and we're going to plug it into that top USB port. We're going to take the opposite end of the cable, plug it into our phone, and watch this. Okay, Apple CarPlay. So we do have to hit continue and we do need to agree in order for it to work. And we're gonna give it a second there. Do we want to allow Sync 3 while, yeah, CarPlay while it's locked, absolutely. And boom, there you go. As you can see, we are now connected. So we've got my Apple Maps, we've got Google Maps, and we've got Waze. So if yours doesn't have factory navigation, we still do have the flexibility of using all of our different app map applications, which is a nice thing. We've got my messages, podcasts, audiobooks, and a number of other things. Now, one nice thing about the Apple CarPlay side of things is that if we go into our general settings, we scroll down to CarPlay, we've got our Sync 3 system, 
we can customize the launcher as well. So if you have a tendency to listen to your podcast more and your audiobooks, we can go up and down. And when we do that, it literally does update it on the fly. So if you want a calendar up at the top there, it's updating it dynamically. We can remove that if we wanted to very simply by just hitting remove. And we can shuffle these things around a bit more. If you've done too much to it, you can literally just do a factory reset in order to bring Sync 3 back to its default screen instead, clicking back into that main screen. And one of the cool things is that when we are connected through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, we still can use our fact we can still use our volume rocker as well so we can use am fm sirius xm while we're connected this way which is nice we don't re necessarily have to rely on our podcast now playing things like that now in order to get back to the sync home screen we're literally just going to press the forward button there and that's launched us back in we can button press in order to get back into carplay or if we go into apple carplay we've got apple carplay and steve's iphone so we've got my phone there, so we can remove it if we wanted to. So if we remove the phone, watch this. So it's back to factory navigation instead. We can disable CarPlay as well. So my phone is technically still charging, but I'm not relying on using Apple CarPlay anymore. We can literally remove it from CarPlay if we wanted to, and there's no connected devices for CarPlay anymore. Actually, we jump back into our phone on the bottom there. I'm still connected over Bluetooth. So we've got my call, contacts list, and things like that. And it really is that simple. Now, if we have multiple devices, we could literally just hit change phone. But let's actually go through and set up an Android device right now as well, because it literally is the same process. So we're just going to hit add Bluetooth device. Select your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. And literally all we're waiting for is for the Transit Connect to show up on this as well. There we go. So we've got the Transit Connect. So we're just going to connect there. Connect to the Transit Connect. Mwahaha, why not? Confirm that the pin displayed on matches the pin displayed on your device. Okay, match up. So we're going to hit yes and OK. For your safety, Perfect. please stay alert to changing road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Okay, so we're connected. So we're just going to hit allow to allow the messages there as well. And uh, one thing, because I've already got a phone connected, it's now given me this option. Do I want to save it as the favorite? Yes or no? Download contacts? Yes, we want to do that as well. So we are now connected to the Android device as well. So we click in. As you can see, we've got my phone assistant. We've got the Galaxy S9. So it really is that simple to be able to set this thing up. We jump into our phone there. We can go into our different phones, view devices. And as you can see, we've got my iPhone set as the current device. And we can either disconnect this, we can make it favorite, or we can remove it as well. So very straightforward there. But we do also have the option of using Android Auto if we want to. So very similar to the Apple side, we're just going to take our USB cable, plug it into that available USB, USB device, opposite end of the cable, plug ourselves into the phone, and watch this. Okay, Android Auto. So on the phone, we would just have to hit Next. And we have to continue. And we just have to make sure that we agree there. Okay, and three, two, and I think we're connected. Are we connected? Yes, we are fully connected there. So as you can see, fully connected, we can jump into some basic settings there as well. So we've got some flexibility. Hit the button at the very bottom, brings us into our basic summary list. We've got our notification center as well as our Google Assistant. So that's really nice is that we've got a little bit of flexibility when it comes down to the actual screen itself. Now, very similar to the iPhone side of things, we do have the flexibility to move some things around. So in our settings screen, we're just going to go to Android Auto. We're just going to go to our basic settings there. We've got my car that's connected. We can, we've got our Google detection. We can customize the launcher there as well. So if you have a tendency, oh, I don't know, maybe you want your news at the very top, you want your weather up there as well, we can kind of adjust things in, as we would like to. But one thing to note is that it's not dynamic the same way it is on the iPhone side. So we do have to actually stop Android Auto and relaunch it in order for those changes to take into effect. Moving back though, we've got our Google Assistant, we can turn weather on or off, and we've got a few other features there as well. But we can jump back to the home screen by pressing that forward button there. And as you can see, we can jump across, we can hot button press to get back into Android Auto on the very bottom. Clicking on the top there is going to launch us into our Android Auto settings. So we can, we've got our Android Auto, we can show connection, and we can remove the Galaxy as well. So if we remove my phone, remove, Android Auto should disappear. Perfect, there we go. And we're gonna disable Android Auto as well. We're going to remove the device from the vehicle and it's now fully disconnected. So really is that simple to be able to adjust phones from there. And then in order to be able to remove phones from the vehicle, we're going to go to view devices and we've got the few devices there. So we can click on either one. We can remove, remove. Then we go to the Galaxy, same idea. We can disconnect or we can completely remove it from the vehicle as well. And the phone is now fully disconnected and it really is that simple.
Now, jumping into our navigation settings, we've got quite a few options there. We've got our 3D model, breadcrumbs, point of interest icons, and a few other things. Breadcrumbs is a neat one because as we go through the actual map, and let's kind of zoom out there, so as we go through different areas, it's literally going to leave little dots and let us know where we've gone. So think of Hansel and Gretel, it's kind of neat setting there. Jumping back into our nav settings, we've got some different options for route preferences, so fastest, shortest, most eco-friendly. We can avoid freeways, toll roads, and things like that. We've also got some other nav preferences, so the navigation preferences are going to be specifically for the voice command prompts and the guidance prompts. So we can have a voice and tone, just a voice, or a tone only. So you've got some flexibility there. And moving back again, so as you can see, we've got a few other options. So we can view our route, we can detour, we've got our search, history, and a few other things. We've got our home and work addresses, point of interest icons, and our history as well. So we've got some few different, we've got quite a few different options when it comes down to it. Moving back in, we can click on the top right there in order to be able to cancel the route as well. Now, moving into our apps. So apps, we can add in a device if we wanted to. We can find different mobile apps. Now, certain apps specifically on the Android Auto side of things, you have to physically be connected through USB in order for them to work. So definitely something to think about there. And moving into our settings, so we've got quite a few different options. So we've got some basic for our sound settings, so treble, mid-range, bass, balance, fade, things like that. Looking at our mobile apps, so we can enable mobile apps via USB. So some mobile apps will have to be connected through USB in order for them to work. Looking at some general settings, we've got quite a few options there. So we can go between English, Spanish, French, Celsius, Fahrenheit, kilometers and miles. We can disable the beep that we get as we go between screens. And we can also do a reset, so either master reset or just the Ford Pass reset as well. So a few options there. Moving down to the side, we've got 911 Assist, Automatic Updates, which I always recommend make sure you connect to your Wi-Fi network at home, turn on Automatic Updates as well, because if the vehicle knows that there's an update available, it's automatically going to update it for us. Ford Pass Connect, the vehicle does have the option for a wireless hotspot for up to 10 devices. We do need a data-only plan through our cell phone provider in order to be able to have that to work well, but we do have that flexibility if we want to set that up. We've got Apple CarPlay, which we are going to remove CarPlay, so let's remove the CarPlay device. Hey, and Apple CarPlay is now gone. And that's one of the nice things, because if we disable Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, the buttons will literally disappear, but when we plug a phone back in, they'll come right back to us again. We've got some basic vehicle settings there as well. So we've got a rear occupant alert, which if we turn the vehicle off, it's going to give us a message letting us know to check the back seat. We've got our camera settings there as well. Now display, we've got a few options. So this is technically the daytime mode because we've got auto, daytime, nighttime, etc. We can lock it into one of the other modes or we can let the vehicle determine if it's going to be in the day or the nighttime mode. And that's going to be dependent on how bright it is outside. And as nice as the screen is, if we find it's a little bit too much, we can turn, the, we can go to a calming screen instead. We can bring it back to life. We can hop inside, go back to our display and turn the display off as well. So we've got some flexibility when it comes down to it. We can change around the brightness and we've got a few other options there. Moving into our voice control. So voice control, we've got a few different options. Advanced mode means we won't get as many notifications as we do certain things. So I want you to listen to something for a second. 97.7. Okay. So what's happened is it's changed radio stations for us, but it hasn't actually told us that it's doing it. So the advanced mode, like I said, we just won't get as many notifications. Phone confirmation, do you want to call such and such person? Yes or no. And then our command list. So when we press the voice command prompt in the steering wheel, this is the command list that's going to show up. Moving back, we've got our valet mode, and that's what that's going to do is give us the option of entering in a four-digit number in order to be able to lock the screen out. So if you've got a valet driver, you want just basic security, we've got that flexibility. And that's going to be the basics of this Sync 3 media screen. What did you think? It's kind of neat, right? And I love how much flexibility there is there. Now, I do recommend going for the XLT trim level so that we can get this larger media screen. But if you have any questions, ran into any problems, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. If you enjoyed the video, thumbs up, share it with your social networks. And until I see you next time, make sure you stay safe.